Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck and a very warm welcome to Friday Fretworks. I'm going to keep this introduction short and sweet because it has the potential to turn into a rather lengthy video. But if you recognise the introduction playing, you may well fancy this video. Um, it was a track called Miss You by the Rolling Stones. I uploaded a cover of this to YouTube going back about six years ago, I guess now. Um, and last I checked, it had just over 250,000 views. Needless to say, a lot of the comments on that video are asking for a tutorial or tabs or the backing track. And I've shied away from it for a little while for what reason, I don't know, to be honest. Um, it's taken a good few days to actually tab this out and as much as this video is going to focus on some of the more key elements and not each lick individually should you want to jam along to it should you want to learn it note for note the tabs and the backing track either together or independently of one another are going to be for sale on my website in the link below in the description box so do check that out if you're interested but if you're just looking for an overview of the track and some of the more key elements i guess or my thought process in how i put this together and you know why i use certain phrases etc etc this video may well be up your street so let's take it away so as i said we're not going to break down every lick because uh, we will be here an eternity but should you want to delve into it on that deeper level and learn pretty much everything um, it's tabbed out and the link will be available in the description box. You can head over to my website and buy it along with the backing track. You can do the two separately or the two together if you want to totally kind of jam along to this. But um, I'm not going to break down every lick. I'm just going to give you an oversight into my approach and a couple of kind of key little passages and phrases along the way. So. Cool. Guess a good place to start as any is the first lick. So, this is all pentatonic position one. To be honest, I'm not especially au fait with all my pentatonic positions, at least as pentatonic positions. I'm pretty fluid all over the neck, but I never sat down and diligently learnt them um, that methodically, particularly. So it's um, a little bit more scattergun than that. But I know this is position one. <laughs> which is exactly what this lick is going to be using. So we're going to be going from your 8th fret down your 5th. That's worth touching upon as well, because that's going to repeat a couple of different places in different inversions, different kind of registers. Essentially taking the kind of uh, root and minor third of an E minor chord. Running down to D sharp, running down to D. Um, so we're going to be sliding that to your ninth fret on your G and then the eighth fret on your B. And taking them both down a fret at a time. Again, utilising that. Same little sequence of notes, but finishing on your 10th fret on your E. So, this is something that's going to repeat, needless to say, as it is the main riff, uh, multiple times throughout the track. And my only advice in this respect um, is learn it in as many places as you can. That'll free you up all over the board. Um, and kind of give you that sort of, I guess, freedom that allows you to build and kind of build a sense of familiarity and tension and release and all that kind of fun stuff, uh, which makes, you know, solos a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more interesting than just a mindless flurry of notes. So as much as it's important to note here, just as well know it. yourself with it in as many places as the neck as you can physically learn um, and it'll free you up totally it's good little advice for familiarizing yourself with the fretboard full stop actually is to take a simple riff like this um, and just learn it in as many places <laughs> First little kind of variation on the main motif there is that little slide. Something people pick up on me doing quite a lot, I guess. Um, and it's just a little momentary slide in this case from your seventh fret on your G string up to your eighth fret, back down to seven, and then pull off to your five. That 
that's your kind of little variation on the end of the leg. There again is that little kind of uh, harmonic rundown. As I said, it's another thing worth uh, learning. This time it happens down on your seventh and your fifth fret on your A and your D, moving down to your sixth and your fourth, and then your fifth and your third. Right, I get a lot of questions about this one. So I'm pretty sure I've nicked this off Slash at some uh, point in some guys. Uh, but as I said, it's one that I get a lot of questions about. So we're gonna start on your third fret of your thickest string, hammering on to your fifth. Then sliding from your third to your fifth to your seventh on your A string. And then flat across your fifth on your D, G, and B. And then the final little thing. Again, it's just pentatonic positions. With those little kind of harmonic minor notes thrown in, like the seventh fret. All that kind of cool stuff. Um, that's that lick. Again, all of that. It's been familiar with the riff in multiple positions, one of which being there. It's just little variations on that. Cool little one there. We're going to be bending a half step up from your 12th fret on your B. For again, that little kind of momentary glissando slide thing. From your 13th back to your 12th. Pentatonic rundown. Back in the main riff. We got a pretty Stevie Ray kind of inspired thing there. So it's a kind of double stop, I guess, in that you're using two strings at once. In this case, you're going to be using your G and your thinnest E. Firstly, flat across the fifth fret, essentially picking up two notes out of an A minor. Then hammering it on to your seventh fret on your G whilst keeping your first finger on the fifth on the E. Very kind of Stevie Ray Hendrixy kind of bluesy thing. Again, we've got that little momentary slide up to your eighth, back to your seventh, down to your fifth. Again, working your way down into a lower. Hopefully you're seeing by this point that a lot of it is just repetition of essentially a, a kind of a very similar lick to be honest, the motif, the riff, whatever you want to call it, you know. It's just variations on that and the way or the reason that the reason that works so well is as I said it just builds a sense of tension and this kind of bit of release here and there and just it all kind of feels like it's building in the right direction and building to a certain point. Again, we've got a kind of pentatonic right now. Again, with a little bit of repetition thrown in at the end for good measure. that little uh, lower register uh, minor third rundown that I mentioned earlier. Again, pentatonic. Variation on the riff, up the octave. Cool, that's worth touching upon. Again, it's a variation on. 
So, similar to that kind of double stop thing we did earlier, we're going to be sliding up to the 12th fret on your G before the 12th fret on your E. And then down a fret at a time. Just the main riff. Right, and we've got that little kind of build. It coincides with the drums. Um, and I always think, kind of, again, it's repetition it boils down to. It's that kind of building of tension, in which case, um, this specific case, I should say. It's kind of like an old, you know... Kind of Chuck Berry rock and roll kind of thing. Um, so we're going to be sliding up to the ninth fret on your G before the eighth on your B. Basically repeating that quite quickly. And again, that's a little kind of idea that comes back later on. Again, it's just variations on the riff. At the octave. fun tapping this one out, the never-ending Stevie Ray lick. Um, so essentially, as I said, it's a Stevie Ray kind of idea. Um, probably trace its lineage back to Hendrix quite easily, I imagine, uh, but it's a very kind of Texas blues kind of thing. So... <laughs> specific tab for this will be in the tablature, needless to say. I've probably messed it up now. The problem with slowing stuff down is that you lose the flow, and if you're very much a kind of uh, spontaneous player like myself, I guess, um, trying to break stuff down is an absolute nightmare. But suffice to say, it's a very kind of Stevie Ray thing in that we're going to be... Something like that, hopefully that's helpful. That's that thing I mentioned earlier, coming back. It's a variation on the first time around, but again, it's the same note, sliding up to your ninth on your G, and then your eighth on your B. Three times. Again, that's going to come back in a second, as you will see. So, what we have there is what we've just done, but then changes over to faster triplet. So. so, it's essentially the same notes, but goes from being a case of... said it's fast triplets but instead of actually picking out the notes individually they become one and it's just a you know kind of fast right hand thing as much as anything else again that's all taking part in this place all in position, or whatever that would be if you pentatonics, but again, it's just kind of replicating what you've been doing lower down. <laughs> yeah, that was the other one I had fun with. Um, again, get a lot of questions in regard to that specific lick there. People asking what it is, um, and referring to it usually as the fast repeating lick. Um, so I'm gonna try and break that down. Again, it's in the tab specifically, but just to give you a general idea, as people suggest, it's just a repetition thing, so. Something like that. Hopefully by this point you're starting to see the repetition is a big part of it. Again, we've got one lip that's kind of really milk there. So it's 20, that's 17 on your E. 
down to 17 on your B. Resolving on the 19 on your E. Now we've got the fun part. Um, slightly disingenuous, I've made you know multiple points about this in the past, but in the video itself, for Miss You, I'm playing a Telecaster. On the recording, I'm playing a Strat. Reason being, a snap string the day of recording, so I ended up using this, the uh, Telecaster that was on hand. Obviously, the Telecaster has got 21 frets. Uh, strat has 22. So we're right up on your 22nd fret here. With a kind of descending bend, I guess, would be the easiest thing to call it. Very Lindsay Buckingham mess. I think the end of the chain, it's that kind of frantic sort of, you know, kind of descending thing, I guess. So eight of them in total, I do believe, getting progressively lower each time, but, but with a pretty aggressive, pretty extreme, dramatic vibrato. <laughs> Again, ending on a little kind of variation of the riff. Back into the riff with a variation, we've got that little kind of glissando that we looked at earlier. And again, we've got a variation on that Stevie Ray lick. Um, so again, it's some very Texas blues. on the riff, hopefully you're getting the point by this point. Again, repetition of that. Before, again, repeat in. That kind of little thing at the end. Uh, before, again, just another minor pentatonic rundown. That's where I've stopped tabbing it out as soon as the video is dark and fades out. I've stopped tabbing it out there. But everything to this point, as I said, if you want to do in-depth, specific analysis for whatever reason of any kind of specific lick, they're all tabbed out uh, by hand by myself. And that took about three days, so that was fun. Um, but as I said, the backing track is also available. This was more, I guess, a conceptual look um, at the way in which I constructed it. As I said, the, the key words, repetition, 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 ironically... Um, it just builds a sense of dynamic, sense of sort of tension and release and all that kind of fun stuff, which just, as I said, makes solos um, a little bit more kind of meaningful rather than just a meaningless flurry of notes that some people get a little bit caught away, you know, caught up in. Um, it's really not, at least for me, it's never been a chance to kind of try and show prowess or try and demonstrate something that you've learned yesterday. You know, it's a case of being melodic, being dynamic. Um, and just telling a little bit of a story to the listener, taking them on a little bit of a journey. But I'm waffling and I'm sounding increasingly pretentious now, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is helpful. As I said, both the tab and the backing track are together um, independently. Together independently, that's a phrase, isn't it? Uh, available together or independently of each other in my web store, the link of which is in the description for this video. Please do check them out. Um, and... I shall see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care, and I shall see you soon.